But what is it that you're going through? Perhaps it's empathic distress. You have a high empathy level, and so you feel distress in because you give so much of yourself. You feel what they are experiencing. You actually feel it in your bones. But you might also be experiencing compassion fatigue, which is burnout and secondary traumatic stress. The second element of compassion fatigue is secondary traumatic stress. The person struggling with a health crisis, they experience the primary trauma, but somehow you experience the same stress that they're going through. So you are vicariously traumatized in your helping role by being compassionate, by being empathetic, by being loving and caring. But you can also experience moral injury. When you witness, when you do something or you fail to prevent something that you know needs to be done but you can't, your hands are tied, maybe it's the leader or your organization or your agency, and what happens to you? You know you could have done better but you just couldn't do it. That's moral injury. So that's what brings us here today, to talk about how to manage empathic distress and burnout and secondary trauma and vicarious trauma and moral injury. I created a fabulous framework. And the fabulous framework is based on the last five years of research, best practices, evidence-based studies on building resilience. First is flexibility. We also have to find awe-inspiring moments. So I'm in this palazzo from the year 1297, and I look up, and it's an awe-inspiring moment. The sky is above me, and I'm thinking how many thousands of people through the centuries have stood where I am standing. It's, it's a godly moment. It is in a moment of awe. It's a touching experience, whether you are giving birth or looking at architecture or going outside, outside the hotel and looking up at the sky or walking into a garden. We realize in these moments that we are not alone. And we need to be very mindful that we are not alone because life is so hard. I'm a specialist in sudden traumatic loss. I have seen and heard so many sad stories, especially since COVID. So we need to be very mindful of our own loss, of our own strengths, our own traits, the things that we could put into practice so we could live our lives and live it fully. I was doing a training, a full day training, and the requester of my program brought in a monk. And in the morning, he created, started to create a Mandela and we got to see it at break and then we saw it before and after lunch and then again the afternoon break and at the end of the day we all gathered around and he just swept it away. He was just mindful of the experience. It wasn't about the outcome. It was just about the process and sometimes we need to remember that. Now, if you had a superpower that would make your job easier, what would it be? I want you to think about that for a moment. A superpower. So many people in my workshops say they want to be cloned. There's simply not enough time, and being cloned would just help them in their job. Show of hands, do you want to be cloned? Yeah. What about slowing down time so you can get so much more done? Reading minds, that's also a biggie. I would just want to be a fly on the wall and just listen. So just take one minute and just share with the person near you. If you had a superpower what would, that would make your job easier, what would it be? Just take a minute. Any of you. And what you can find when you work in a position where you love what you do, where you're respected, where there's a flexible workplace, it becomes a workplace of spirituality. Nothing to do with religion. This is not about religion. It is about building trust with employees. It enhances the positive outcomes in your patients. There's a link between spirituality and knowledge sharing. There is a connection. You're doing something for the greater good. You have found meaning in your work, and there's a spiritual connection to what you do. The second element is attitude. It's about having a positive attitude. 
Well, I've been doing this a very long time, and back in 2005, I was doing a keynote for a nursing conference, nurse, they were school nurses, and I'm on the stage, and I said, it's so important at the end of the day, when you're done with your patience and giving so much of yourself, so much love, it's really important to go home and decompose. Your body needs to decompose. <laughs> and they start laughing, and I hear a lot of noise in the audience, and I'm like, no, it's very, I'm serious. You really need at the end of the day to decompose. Your body just needs to decompose. I even do this, you know, to show them the importance of what I'm saying. Thank God, any nurses in the room? God bless you. They run up to the front of the room. I have two microphones, and they're like, Barbara, you're, you're telling us to um, decompose? I'm like, no, I'm not. I was indignant, because in my mind, I'm saying, you know, decompress, of course. <sighs> it's a hard job.